Hello, my topic today is torque expression limitations using cone beam CT. My name is Jeffrey Miller. I graduated from Towson University, did my dental school training at University of Maryland, got my orthodontic certificate at SUNY Buffalo, and I have been in private practice in orthodontics for just over 31 years. When we talk about torque expression, we're talking about mechanically moving the root and the crown of the tooth to torques based on statistical norms for similar ethnic rate, uh, groups. So uh, normally most of us have pre-torqued or pre-angulated brackets based on average torques for a certain tooth. With cone beam CT, we can see not only the tooth on an individual basis and its supporting bone, but we can see the anatomy of the underlying bone which may not be consistent with the torque expression that we're using in our particular uh, bracket prescription. This is a 29-year-old um, male patient. He came to us with uh, already missing the, both lower central incisors. Our plan was to extract the upper bicuspids to retract the upper anterior teeth and get better alignment. Here is the occlusal views. Uh, this was taken in June of 2013. If you take a look at the Panorex, you can see he had a root canal on the upper right central incisor. Now the root canal was a result of trauma to that, that tooth. So we didn't want to extract the bicuspids only to find out that the upper central incisor was, um, was ankylosed. So what we did was we uh, got level and alignment of the upper anterior teeth, made sure that the upper right central was mobile or you know not, not ankylosed, and then we would send him for the extraction of upper first bicuspids. And that's what we did. Unfortunately, he decided he didn't want the extraction of the bicuspids. He was happy with the way his teeth looked. He said, just can you finish me the way I, you know, I, uh, I look now. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it, even though my upper teeth are a little protruded. I'm still okay with it. And here's what he looked like in December of 2013 after uh, alignment. We took a cone beam CT. I wanted to see if the root uh, was centered within the alveolar process uh, before I agreed to finish him with uh, without the extractions. And uh, it looked pretty good. However, at that point, we had not had a rectangular wire in there. There was no torque expression on the upper lateral or any of the anterior teeth up till that point. Here he is uh, a year and three months later. This is March of 2015. Now, if you, if you look closely, you can see the torque looks better on, the, on these upper incisors because with the lingual brackets, Torque expression is, is uh, very precise. It's much more, uh, there's a much better expression of torque using linguals than labials. Plus these are custom made brackets and there's a pressure fit of the wire. So you really do get pretty good torque expression. But take a look at the additional tissue stripping associated with the anterior teeth. Now the torque looks better, but everything else kind of looks worse. Here he is with the, um, in March of 2015, and take a look at the sagittal view of the upper left central uh, lateral incisors. This is tooth number 10. You can see that the torque pushed the root of the tooth through the limit or the boundary of the cortical plate. So when you put torque on teeth, it's really important to know the underlying anatomy of the alveolar bone. You know, and once we saw this, we sent them to have the teeth extracted, and then we'll, we'll we track those teeth back over the thickness of the alveolar bone, so it shouldn't be a problem. If you look, the root of this tooth is parallel with the anatomy of the alveolar process. And here it kind of is a progression of his, of his treatment. You can see that the, the torque looks better here, but the perforation of or the dehiscence of the root through the cortical plate is an issue. 
This next case was a transfer case that came in from an unorthodontist from Texas. Uh, he had been trying to co correct the overjet by using uh, class two elastics. And we take a look at the lower and side, anterior region. You can see that these teeth are tipped. They're too procumbent. They're pushed through the limit of the cortical plate. Now, you may look at this and say, well, is that a torquing problem? Well, if you were to torque these teeth, you would then throw the apex of the root right out of the bone. So to, at this point, to correct this, you'd probably have to extract four bicuspids, where when he first came in, if they would have just extracted two upper bys, they could have avoided this compromised position of these lower incisors. Now, I don't, uh, I don't think anybody really knows the long-term implication of this type of boundary violation, orthodontic boundary violation. But if it was my mouth or one of my family's uh, teeth or one of my patients, I wouldn't leave them like this. When you think about patients with bimaxillary protrusion, uh, typically they're treated with four first bicuspid extractions. Well, if they have bimaxillary protrusion, they probably have bimaxillary alveolar bone anatomy. So retracting these incisors into the extreme, you know, to, to um, reduce the procumbency, you are going into a case where you know you're going to create dehiscence and fenestrations. Uh, I'm not sure, you, it's still uncertain to what extent that uh, those fenestrations and, and dehiscence are and how relevant they are clinically. I mean, maybe it, it doesn't matter, maybe it does, but, you know, if you can avoid it, I think you're better off. Thanks for listening. Uh, any questions or comments, uh, feel free to email me at ortho606 at gmail.com. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this short presentation. Thank you.